So the Bible says, Ho, oh, everyone that thirsts, come and drink and buy bread without money. Why do you spend your money on that which is done? The moment has arrived where everyone in this room has a choice. And there are two of you in this room that are in the most danger. And then there are two others of you that are in such a great place that words cannot describe it. The two that are in danger are those that practice saying, I am not going to serve Christ. It's beneath my intellectual prowess to entertain the idea that Christ is divine and this is the word of God. I'm going to tell you what's wrong. In order to maintain that, people always say, oh, the Christians are such fools because they're taking such a vast step of leap of faith. No one is exercising faith like the atheist. Nobody. Because they're taking a universe that we keep upgrading how big it is. We don't know how big it is. Last time we checked, someone said 55 billion light years across. Try to imagine how long it would take light to travel 55 billion years at 182,000 miles per hour. And the atheist said, in all of that expanse, there's no God. You've been to all of it. That's why Chesterton said, the atheist is like someone that has painted the inside of a cardboard box black and painted stars and said, this is the universe. You don't know. You don't know. And quit saying you do. You're convincing yourself. Here's what happens in the modern mind. We believe a philosophy and it doesn't work. So we immediately move to the next level, to something else, to be distracted from it. The relationship blows up. We go, it was their fault. It was their problem. It was their, there's some self-analysis, but never true honesty. And you're the victim, nobody else. Second person that's in danger is the miserable Christian. The miserable Christian. Boy, you talk about a paradox. You talk about a self-canceling phrase. The other day, somebody described to me a coffee drink that is a decaf latte made with skim milk. And when you order that, they call it a why bother. <laughs> and we have why bother churches. We don't talk about sin and therefore we don't have victory. We don't talk about repentance, therefore the active ingredient of conversion never kicks in. So we have people that have gone to church that have, are re listening to such a dumbed down, deluded, ineffective version of Christ that they wonder, why did you bother? Why do you bother listening to someone who's actually saying nothing? It's better for you to sit under a cranky, annoying individual like me because you know for a fact that I'm telling you the truth of God. Somebody said amen. Now, close your eyes, everyone. <coughs> the Bible said that in the last days there would be fake Christians. There's a lot of things said in the Bible about fake Christians. It said they'd have a form of godliness, but deny the power of it. The Bible says that in the last days there would be people that would be ever learning and educating themselves, but never come to the knowledge of the truth. I know that I offended people in this room. I know I offended people that are watching on live stream. But I know for a fact that if you could just humble yourself 
the best thing that you could ever imagine could happen to you. The best thing that ever happened to you. The worst thing that could happen to you is to drive in a car in Chicago using a map of downtown Los Angeles. None of the streets are the right name. None of it works. That's exactly what you're doing. You're using a map to live by that is not God's word. And that map has all the wrong street names, all the wrong results, and you're paying the price. Let me tell you what pride says. I know what I'm doing doesn't work, but I'd rather suffer than to just admit I'm wrong and find peace. It's not worth it. So in a moment, I'm gonna ask you to raise your hand across this audience. If you'll say, I am tired of having a weak faith. I can't stand up to the culture. I got to tell you, Mario, I fold up in the presence of an angry leftist. I fold up because my Christianity is not deep enough to withstand their assault. But if you had the real Jesus, you would stand against the culture. You would stand against the tide. You would be that house built on the rock that when the winds of lies and perversion come, your house will stand. Today's the day for you to have a new life, a new heart, a new mind, and peace and forgiveness in your soul. Christ wants to forgive you right now. He wants to change you. He wants to transform you. Now, listen very carefully. Don't miss this. How do I know that I need to raise my hand? How do I know it? This is where modern preaching has failed you because it doesn't identify the crisis and the tragedy. You have fear, you have anger, you have confusion, you have heaviness of heart and spirit. You don't know what your future holds. You say, Mara, you're taking a long time to say all this. As I told you last night, I have a right to a long altar call. Because Peter said, Bible says in Acts 2, that Peter, with many other words, he spoke and compelled them, saying, save yourself from this doomed generation. The things that you are relying on are going to be destroyed. The foundation you are living on is quicksand. The ideas that you feel are noble are a counterfeit to the real light. And Jesus said, take heed that the light that is in you be not darkness. So rather than examining yourself and saying, well, I'm not that bad a person. I don't do those many things wrong. Don't look at that. Look at this. Why does my life hurt? Why do I feel such moments of emptiness? Why am I continually dreading the future because I don't know what's going to happen to me. It's because even though you've gone to church and even though you've confessed and believed in the Bible and in Christ, you never got the genuine article, the miracle, the transformation. Now's your chance. Mario, will you pray for me that today my fear, my depression, my confusion, my anxiety, how we sang it tonight. I just want to speak the name of Jesus over everything. That's what I'm doing. It's not a song. It's not just a song. It's an act. Man telling you, look, haven't you heard enough? Haven't you been in pain long enough to understand that God wants to give you something more than you ever imagined? And he wants to do it now. But you've got to let me pray for you. Mario Murillo, pray for me. I want the real Jesus, the real peace, the real new life. And I want it now. Let me see your hand. Raise it wherever you are. 
Raise it wherever you are. Raise it right now. Listen, if you're afraid of raising your hand, hands have gone up in every part of this tent. If you raise your hand right now, you're not going to be by yourself. You're going to be part of a great group that is leaving prison for new life. Put your hand in the air. If you didn't already and you need this, get your hand up. Now, everyone with your hand raised, stand to your feet. Stand up wherever you are. Stand up. Stand up. Stand up. Stand up. Stand up. If you need this, the real Jesus, stand up. Now, all of you that are on your feet, find the nearest aisle and come to Christ right now. Come. All of you that are standing, come right now. Fill in right here over the middle, every one of you. Fill in and come right now. 